uh, my special guest, Mr. Lagrande. Please introduce yourself to the audience. Okay, well, um, I am Spencer Lagrande. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> he has spoken. <laughs> okay. Yes, and um, and so you, and you have written a lovely book, Forsaken: The Long Road. So now mm-hmm. tell me. So so tell me how what what prompted you to write? This is your first novel. This is my first novel. Um, I'm not gonna say my only. Yeah, right. But uh, whatever God will, you know, is willing to give me to right. any kind of um, more words or mm-hmm. more Amen. inspiration, right. I'm willing to do. But today, this mm-hmm. book is basically the main point. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, Forsaken is just my my testimony yeah. to give back to you guys. Mm-hmm. I am a, a young black man who mm-hmm. went through a lot in life. Mm-hmm. And I have a gift, and I've been through a lot yeah. to get to this point. Exactly. And this is my sharing back to you guys to say mm-hmm. thank you mm-hmm. and sorry that I have to write this book. Mm-hmm. But it's also a gift mm-hmm. if you really have been hurt mm-hmm. by the church or hurt by anybody, yeah. spiritual leaders or people in power. Yes. This book was written for you. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Exactly. So we were having a delightful conversation before we uh, came in the studio. So, yeah. So tell me the road to the long road uh, to Forsaken. Um, yeah. How did how did what was the, the, the pivotal moment in your life that you said, I, you know, I'm living a life that um, that is a story that needs to be told and I can tell it. Well, um, I was um, definitely. One of the kids who was in one of the biggest lawsuits in the black church. Mm. And um, I don't want to say his name because I, I really don't want to bring him up because he's, he's um, you know, God rest his soul. Yeah. Okay. But um, I'm a humble Christian. Mm-hmm. And I still, um, I still believe that I have forgiveness in my heart. So I want to make sure that no matter what's done, mm-hmm. I have a way to get out. And to help others and bring awareness mm. without having to hurt people, without having right. to say anything negative. You know, that's why I'm really here well. to really. Yeah, exactly. But it's a lot going on right now. I was about to say, listen, it's baby. It's a lot going on, and that's why I'm here. And, um, yeah. mm-hmm. and I'll be real with you. A couple of days ago, I was really sad with mm-hmm. my with my spirituality. I was like, Lord, what what's my purpose? Yeah. What's my purpose of me going through what I went through? Mm-hmm. And it's so crazy. Two days later, I'm here with you talking. There you go. That's why. Because, it's time. This is the you time. You know, those who are chosen, yep. you know, it will wake it will, Like you said, it'll wake you up out your sleep. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, like yes. the, this is a story that I need to tell. Mm-hmm. You know, so let's go all the way to the beginning. Okay. Um, because the one thing that we kind of all share mm-hmm. as um, uh, people of a uh, melanin hue mm-hmm. yes. is that the church no matter what denomination, um, is taught to us to be the source of our supply, yes. period. Right. Everything else comes after that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, some of us have been blessed to have, you know, really, you know, incredible experiences in church, uh, and some of us have not. And that is that goes across gender, race, size, you right, know. Right. And when I say race among colored people, I mean you're either you're African or Haitian or Jamaican right. or, you know, right. all matter. of our experiences, you know, are somewhat different. But they're all somehow our lives are rooted from the church. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So and you're supposed to believe that everything, everything that happens in the church, mm-hmm. you know, is ordained and you somehow must accept Right. Yep. Um, and then as you get older and you get out in the world and things look different and, you know, there are things that you were taught that's like, okay, yeah, no, not so much. Right. right. And it is very confusing. And so I think, uh, Spencer, I mean, one of the things when Jay and I talked um, and she told me about the book, I was like, you know what? Amen to him. Mm-hmm. Because it's not easy to tell your truth. Right. But at the same time, you know, the only power that you have in your life mm-hmm. is coming from sharing your truth. Exactly. And, you know, and once you just, and so I'll start at the end and we'll go back to the beginning mm-hmm. because, you know, and you said it almost, just the dichotomy of trying to be who you want to be in the world, but having this just like thundercloud always around makes it hard for you to be your complete and full self. 
<laughs> yep, and I agree with that. Um, my whole life, I was a very popular high school kid. Mm-hmm. Played basketball, starting varsity, mm-hmm. popular with the ladies in school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One day changed my life. Yeah. One day changed my life. So what I have to say back is um, I'm here to try to bring awareness yeah. To try to help others because I'm not going to be here every day. I'm not going right. to be here forever. Right. But what I leave behind is important. Amen. So yeah. let's go back to mm-hmm. that day. Mm-hmm. Tell me, what was, what happened that day? Well, that day, uh, a big lawsuit mm-hmm. hit the world, all right? Which but, was? Uh, which was the uh, the Bishop Eddie Long okay. lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, everything happened the way it happened. Mm-hmm. And um, now he's not with us anymore, but I'm still here mm-hmm. living. And moving on from that, from there, it, it it left me questioning what was my purpose in life mm-hmm. after the math. Mm-hmm. And I could either do nothing, say nothing, and try to move on and die. Mm, right. Or I could question God and say, why am I here? What What's my purpose? But he promised me he would give my life back to me tenfold because of my truth. So what was your experience in the church? Well, overall, Mm -hmm. um, I had a great experience Mm -hmm. up until the day that I spoke about the issues. Now, um, I have uh, made a lawsuit Mm -hmm. and and, and and it's over now. You know, the the, the lawsuit is, is over, done. But what was it? It was the the Eddie Long uh, lawsuit about about um, I don't really want to uh, give me one second. You you try to explain. That. Confirm. <laughs> right. yeah, you try to confirm that. Well, you know, yeah, right, so, right. Jay, yeah. So basically, there were gentlemen who had been mistreated. There were inappropriate relationships with a man in power, mm-hmm. and the lawsuit resulted from that. Okay. The lawsuit was settled out of court. There was an NDA that mm-hmm. was signed, so they were binded by gotcha. this legal document. Gotcha. Right? However, that doesn't negate the fact that the truth needs to be told. It needs to be brought to the forefront, especially now with what we're seeing in the in the media, right. social media streets every single day for this past at least week. Yeah. We've been the the, the lines have been permeated with the newest scandal. Um and we're praying for the victims, we're praying for the assailants, we're praying for the families, because this is a very traumatic time. But we can no longer, because, you know, I'm going to tell you, we've been contemplating how we wanted to promote this book, mm-hmm. how we're going to get the maximum exposure for right. this book. And as the publicist, Queen Up Media, as the publicist and co-author of Forsaken, mm-hmm. we wanted to make sure that the message was clear. Right. We're not here, this is not about malice, right. this is not about creating or adding to a scandal, this is not about making someone look bad. You understand? This is about, again, like Spencer said, awareness. Bringing mm-hmm. about awareness, teaching, uh, prevention, and ultimately, Jill, this is about healing. Yeah. This is what this is about. And people like you and I were talking off the air, and you were talking about living in your truth. Mm-hmm. That's all that we ask, especially right. when we're looking at, at people at, who are in, in positions of power. So part of the message that Spencer wants to give to the community is that you're not alone in your struggles. You're not right. alone in this traumatic experience. Yeah. So you understand? So this is a yeah. safe space for people to who who going to buy the book, who going to yeah. read the book. I mean, this is a message to them to say, hey, listen, talk up, speak up, seek help, seek guidance, and we're here. Yeah. We're here for you. Well, it's on every uh, book platform, Amazon, Barnes Everything. & Noble, okay. Books A Million. You can search it anywhere. It's not one that it's not on. It's Forsaken, F-O-U-R, S-A-K-E-N, The Long Road, and it's by Spencer Legrande, or Legrande. Yeah. Legrande. Uh, yes. So you became a member of your church through your family, or tell us how, yep. you, how you began so, in church. So like all religion, it starts with our mom and dad. Mm-hmm. And with, with my case, I didn't have my father in my life, so that's mm-hmm. where the problem was. Mm-hmm. If you look at this, mm-hmm. this story progress in this book, you're going to see that the issue was a fatherless kid. Yes. Okay. Growing up without a father is the really the main problem. Growing up without Amen. any kind of spiritual guidance yeah. from the man part, especially as a son. Yes. So mm-hmm. that issue is really the main issue mm-hmm. in this book okay. is growing up with an empty spot in my heart, looking for acceptance, looking for love. Right. When you look for those type of things, mm-hmm. it's easy to come by, even from corrupted people or even from people who don't want to give you that fatherly love they may show it but they don't always give it in the end Mm -hmm. so growing up without a father Mm -hmm. 
being told to go to church. That's a, that's another problem in our in our culture. Mm-hmm. Our moms and dads make us become Christian, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't have a problem with it. Okay, but right. That sometimes is wrong because they say, hey, wake up, let's go to church. But we don't know if that that pastor is good for us, good for our family. Right. We or that be, denomination. Or that, that denomination. <laughs> right. That matter, exactly. Right. right. So yeah. that's so that's where this story leads you into the hula hoop of what right. an average black kid in the United States goes through Without when they father. when they find religion. Mm-hmm. Right. And I've been to seminary school, so I've I've been through that whole process of learning how to experience or how to get through being without a father next was the meeting going to church being uh, very into church falling in love with church Mm. falling in love with everything church has to offer Mm -hmm. Mm. and then not only that being singled out by the man of God the man who we who we worship worship or the man who we Get worship from like the the one who we we're getting our spiritual food from from mm. and and thinking mm-hmm. about it sometimes that food ain't good for you. You're listening to Hot Talk with Jill Tracy on Hot One O Five. I ask God every day, why does He or why, why did, did He, he put choose me, you? Yeah. Put me through what He put me through. What's yeah. my why? Why is my purpose different from everyone else who's getting cars and clothes and getting fame and everything? I don't want to sit here in the, in these shoes, but. I'm gonna if I'm going to sit in these shoes, I'm gonna do my best to help someone. I am breaking the curse of my bloodline. My mom, mm. she never told anybody, but recently that thing has happened to her when she was a kid. Mm. And that hurt me. She told me that recently. Yeah. She never told anybody. Wow. And I she I, never had nobody she, she never could. had nobody she could tell it to. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't feel safe. She came to uh-huh. me crying and tears. I Spencer never told anybody this, but this happened to me when I was when I was a kid. Yeah. And I said, wow. I said, I am breaking this bloodline, this curse in my yeah. bloodline today. Yes. Now, regarding the issues that's going on today, which we are not really trying to speak on, but what I want to say about that is we're not looking for people in high power to fall. Right. It just hurts us to see them fall because we love them. Yes. We we trust them. We 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 hope that this is not true, that that these things aren't happening. I'm not here to to say Oh, I told you so. I'm here to right. say, Lord Jesus, take the wheel. Mm-hmm. Help us understand what's going on and why it's going on. 